Welcome back everyone to Let's Play War on the Sea in the U.S. Campaign, episode number 18. Boy, the last episode. <laughs> it's kind of funny, I mean, this is kind of to be expected. When things are going well, everyone's happy, but... The moment you lose a ship, the comment section is just gonna explode with the... Uh, backseat gamers. But, this is, like, as I said, it's to be expected. There's not a whole lot to talk about. Well, I mean, there's, there's still plenty that... There's still plenty of uh, opinions to throw around, I'm sure. Um, before losing the ship, but there's a lot more afterwards, which is true in real life, I'm sure as well. <laughs> I mean, look at the Enterprise and all her reports she was sending back in the Guadalcanal Theater when you know things didn't go well. Hey, you know the those AA guns, they didn't work. <laughs> um, anyway, so I sent out all the scout planes, which is not true. I mean, because we have plenty in reserve, and I actually was not able to get. I'm not able to access the cruiser group right now, so we have to advance forward in time, but uh, let's kind of take a look at what I have done here so far. We have a wildcat going down there. Some small amount of time has advanced. Um, I don't know if that happened last at the end of the last episode, or if I accidentally, um, just as a coincidence, my recording button is actually tied to the key, which advances time, <laughs> which is not good. Anyway, uh, so I, I did send, I was able to get Port Moresby the cooldown had expired, so I was able to launch a second Wildcat. I'm expecting to launch a third one, more a little bit further east of this one. We're just scouting the same area, and this is going to double cover some of the area that Thresher is covering, but I'm okay with that because airplanes are just so much faster. So it'll give us, um, you know, information much more quickly. I'm starting to cover the Solomon Sea. I'm going to send another Wildcat out like that, our original one. I think I showed this on camera last time, is doing this zigzag and then. We're just, we want to eliminate this area as a potential avenue of approach for um, a fleet, and I don't know, I don't expect actually that that'll be the avenue of approach, but we have Thresher, we have a couple of Wildcats, we have everyone patrolling there. Going on over to the cruiser group, I sent one Kingfisher up this way. In my head, I thought for some reason I, I forgot about, this was something I did off camera right before beginning to record this. I forgot about the cooldown for launching aircraft, so I was like, okay, I'll launch one here. And I'll launch one right here to cover this area. And I also have to remember, I mean, there's such a coordination. How did the allies do this? They must have had, I don't mean, there's probably areas which are double covered and that's not that bad of a thing. Anyway, uh, let's see, we have aircraft covering over here as well. I don't know at what point this one is going to get to before it reaches its limit. So usually the last line I draw way too far, um, just because they do end up going a little bit beyond their, their um, ex exact endurance. Um, since the the timer, which which actually tracks how far they are in their endurance, is only triggered ever so often. Um, this one's covering the uh, inside, so we have the inside and the outside part of this island. Um, we're covering both of them, and this is, I guess, a misspelling. It's Malaita. It's M A L A I T. A. All right, so that's that. We have our B seventeen, which I already launched last time. We also got this <laughs> this wild Dauntless out to patrol this um, south of Rental Island. Convoy Zebra has her, retained her orders for once. Um, so t we have two Task Force 10s. So this is going to become Task Force 11. Okay, there we go. Um, I think that's everything we want to do before we move forward, and then we're going to launch some more aircraft. So that's the name of the game right now is Scout. Scout, Scout, Scout. Early morning hours. We haven't had information for about eight hours in the skies. So as soon as we can, and we can now, we have the ability to launch um, from Brooklyn. Let's start doing that. So I, I mentioned that one of them is going to go up this way. So we're going to send one. Uh, before I even give the orders, let me see if I can grab the Kingfisher in question here. Yeah, so she's going on the ends, like hugging the, that island. Let's fan this one out a little bit more. If I can get it. There's some magic to this. I was able to do it pretty nicely earlier, but... There, I got it. Okay, so this one's <laughs> gonna go not on the inside. And this is gonna be a bit redundant with some of the other patrols. The main reason I don't want to get too close to the Red Stars over here is they are air bases, and I don't want to lose these. It's not a huge problem if we do, but the, the main issue is just then you don't have them on your cruiser group until you rearm. Same way with the airplanes. Now I was able to grab, okay good. 
It's got Philadelphia to launch as well. One of her Kingfishers. And we've been focusing a lot of our attention to the north, which I think it's wise to do, but I also want to cover some, some interesting angles from this side. So let's kind of sweep over here. Seems like the submarines are kind of like patrolling this area. By the way, the original Kingfisher I sent is going to zigzag up here and then it's going to loop around the island. And at some point during this last leg, it'll lose its endurance and then it'll make a beeline straight back. So we're going to get a lot of scouting information on the way back as well. Um, Rental Island, I don't think has any aircraft left. Okay, has to wait a little bit longer. Milna Bay has to wait. Port Moresby has to Okay, so everyone has to wait a little bit. All right, well, on pause, move forward a little bit. Should get notifications for all these Hornet, everyone else. So I'm, am I sending these guys out in groups of two? Yeah, okay, so that's fine. We're covering the inside and the outside. I don't expect there to be anything up there, but who knows, right? That's, couldn't, I mean, that's that. this is the wonderful cat and mouse. It's now begun again. This is my favorite part of the game, is just trying to figure out where exactly the, the darn enemy is. Maybe I should be so aggressive as to send somebody this way. And just make sure that there's not anybody like way out there. Okay, let's do that. Send one that way. And are these other bases ready to launch? Yeah, so I'm gonna start launching my Wildcats in ones because we're not as worried about air cover if Guadalcanal and um, Florida Islands don't have any air bases. But I'm certainly interested in trying to figure out more area. And I don't think that there's any contingent, like any requirement on um, how many aircraft you need to get better spotting. I'm pretty sure it's just one aircraft spots just as well as 10. That's the, that's what we're relying on anyway. So one other aircraft, let's get this one to spot. Maybe something like this. Okay, that's good. Just to make sure that we aren't missing something over here, which we might be. Port Moresby can now spot. Now, Port Moresby, I'm gonna send her aircraft out in twos because she is gonna, her aircraft are gonna be a little bit more in the danger zone. Do something like this. <clears throat> okay. Well, that's a lot of scouting information that we'll start getting. Uh, maybe Portland can now launch again? Oh my gosh, she can. What a game, this is just, <laughs> it's too much scouting information. Well, I guess if I want, I could try to cover way over here. If I can get sneaking. Uh, I don't want him to get shot down though, even on the way back. Something like that then. And can I still get, I can, okay, good. Indianapolis. Let's get some more aircraft to our south. Um, maybe something almost due south. Knowing as well that my uh, surface action group is going to continue to move southeast, so if I was to do a line like click and then go to the left, I might actually return exactly along the same course because I won't be going back to this point. So I'm going to try to choose lines which um, end up going more south than their second leg. Or even if I, if I send them out just exactly in a straight line, they'll still go back on a different path. Oh, we're going to get some good coverage here though. Okay, something like that. I think, oh, do I already do something like that? Ah, I did. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, let, let the let the planes get a little bit of distance. I got you now. So I did too much of that already. Let's mix it up a little bit. Um, yeah. I, I'm having some problems thinking about what I want to do exactly here. That's better. I like that. Is that too identical? Oh my god, it's so... <laughs> Come on, Tortuga. <laughs> it's just that I really want that exact configuration. <laughs> it's done. Pretend that it's done. Okay, that is better. Good. I just feel like this is an area of the, of the game that I'm not covering well enough of the map. Okay, moving forward, I want Brooklyn to launch her aircraft. I'm gonna try to get a little bit more scouting done over here. So just make a beeline directly over. Oh yeah, I messed this up, didn't I? Let's try this again. 
I want to make sure I'm far enough away from this airbase, but otherwise I won't really want scouting information over here. Just hook that way. We'll be patrolling this sea zone area from like two angles, basically. I'm not sure if I can get the sag. I can. Um, Indianapolis. Who's who am I supposed to be launching with now? Philadelphia. Okay, now let's choose one uh, a little bit more aggressive in this direction, knowing that yeah, you have to be careful about the return path. Okay, is that too much the same? Might be. Hornets ready to launch. Okay, man, this is this. Yeah, this is. Oh god, no, I didn't want to do that. Um, <laughs> I don't know what effect that will have had either. I don't. I hope it didn't do anything. Ruin any of my orders. We'll only discover that later. Yeah, so let's send this one just right up the coast. Basically right up the coast. Is that what I'm already doing with you? No, yeah, I don't I'm not sending anybody just right up the coast. Well, I am. I'm sending this one. Okay. We can squeeze a little bit closer though. And I don't I'm not like a I don't think it's a horrible thing to double cover. Alright, this is weird. There you go. Got it. Or even like have them cross. So we cover a different angle. Okay. Man, have we covered all our aircraft here? We have. I mean, this is just gonna be fun to watch all these aircraft going out. We should have like perfect coverage of everything in this area. I'm feeling pretty confident. Now, what is CTF Dog doing? They're doing the right thing. Oh yeah, I gave orders to the uh, TF-10, our cruise, very successful cruiser group so far. Um, they're gonna move over this way. I know it's hard to tell what the order of these lines is, but I'll just explain. I'm gonna move over here, gonna go around, up, around a second time, and then I'm gonna start patrolling over here. So that's, uh, the last point I think is right here. It's at 20, um, 20 hours from now. So this should all take 20 hours, which means that around midnight or so, I'll be back over in this area a little bit before midnight. I should be back on the western side of the Guadalcanal, ready to intercept anything that is moving down the slot towards Guadalcanal. That's the philosophy there. Milna Bay is ready to launch. Does Milna Bay have anything left to launch? They do. Yeah, I will send these out in, in ones at this point. <laughs> we're very nervous about Incoming, impending doom. That. That probably means, <laughs> there it is, Port Moresby's ready to launch. These are still going out in twos. Okay, launch like that. Ooh, a little bit. Okay, let's have you change course a little bit. Get a little bit higher up. There we go. I'm gonna cover exactly the same spot, although it's not, I mean, we're, we don't think about it just in terms of space, terms, think about it in terms of space-time. The space-time continuum. Uh, so even though this one is gonna cover, the second Wildcat will cover a similar area, it'll be coming in, covering it at a different time. Not probably enough time to, to warrant them being sent right on top of each other, but I mean, that the general idea is, you know, just because I've checked that area in the past doesn't mean that it's free from enemies for the rest of time. <laughs> okay, you need to send yourself. I think this is where we begin your patrol. In fact, I'm gonna keep it a pretty tight patrol, but I think a moving, I think a moving is better. So this is gonna be a thousand clicks, because this is only gonna be 18 hours. Okay, yeah, we'll just keep going like this. Good luck, by the way, just, but I, I do like the idea of moving. You capture, definitely capture more area. I was 39 hours with the patrols. She'll probably get into a fight and lose her orders like right away. That's just the way these things work. Hornet is ready to launch aircraft. So what do we want Hornet to do? I mean, let me kind of make sure I'm really examining where our aircraft are going here. It looks like we're going to have good coverage of this area, which I was a little bit worried about. 
Yeah, we. I mean, we have good coverage of almost every... Okay, got something here. There they are. There they are. Okay. Well, are they out of strike range? I think they are. Okay, I'm gonna cancel your orders just to figure out how much distance this is. 391. We'll continue back with your previous orders. 391 is outside of the range of our strike craft. However, they are slow, we are fast, so we can kind of close the gap and then maybe send a strike over. Oh, by the way, I want to make sure that, yeah, I don't neglect Convoy Zebra here. As soon as she gets back in, we need to make sure that we get her rearmed. So I'll have to keep an eye on her. I feel like this is pretty good coverage of the sea zone though. Even the Solomon Sea, I don't... I mean, the thing that people are repeatedly mentioning in the comments is that how Port Moresby will be invaded. So let's keep a, a close eye out for that. But I have to say, this is a pretty... <laughs> we have aircraft everywhere. Let's just send somebody, like, as far out as we can. Where is, where is there even a gap at this point? <laughs> Something like this, maybe? I don't think there's many gaps. B-17 is going to cover basically that same area. Oh, okay, we got one submarine up here. That's... That's cool. Well, I mean, it's good that we're spotting them, at least. Oh, Kingfisher, we'll just ignore it. Good information, but we don't want to do anything with it yet. Certainly a Kingfisher is not going to do anything to a submarine. I don't think they carry any kind of ordnance. So yeah, so that one is moving west. That one's actually moving northwest. Why do they have a submarine moving northwest? Isn't that curious? Okay, well let's start launching some more float planes here. Another round of aircraft. Where did we not cover that we feel like we should cover more? I would say something straight out. 351, so let's go almost all the way to 350 and then send you south, just to force a different return path. Indianapolis. We might want to risk this one going a little bit closer. like that maybe still have two aircraft I mean I will probably want to launch uh, more flow planes to keep reconnaissance on these two I feel like we didn't get enough coverage up here what was happening to the I think it was your it was the Wildcats wasn't it? The Wildcats supposed to go up there did they go up there I didn't see them that's fine we'll just pretend that that was just a, a report that was lost on time like this and we're moving so we'll actually be able to get Philadelphia to launch hers to cover kind of like the, the further aspect of that something like that Oop, no damn it okay there we go off we go into the wild blue yonder. Philadelphia is ready to launch it. I mean, at some point, I'm just gonna my my hand. I'm gonna incur carpal tunnel syndrome if we keep launching. Twenty minutes of air scouting, but no, nothing to report. All right, let's send another one just out as far as you can go this way. Little Bay, do you have one? You do. Likewise, let's just send you as far as you can go this way. Isn't it weird that this is like three? This is 340, but the one over here was like 400. Doesn't, I mean, I know that somebody took out a ruler and they're measuring these things, but that doesn't seem like 400 if that is 330. But yeah, okay, the angle is probably right. Oh, okay. Now we have to, the timbre is being attacked. Begin. Hopefully we begin on the surface. We don't. Okay, well this is not just... Wow, we are close too. Very cool. So the timbre 
is going to be attacked here. There is going to be some ships in the area since we're at periscope depth. Let's find out what we're up against. Yep. They're close. Alright, so now the trick, as we now know, um, it's a little goofy to me, but it, I mean, it makes some sense, and I can't say, I can't like decry the game for it because it's the same way that I do my ASW. Apparently, this is how it works. So we're we're living, we're all learning together. I know, angry person, you you just want to play a little bit differently. Please feel free to play differently when you pick up the game yourself. Um, but this is now my uh, I'm I'm adapting to the gameplay. I'm gaming the game. This is never how I played Silent Hunter. <laughs> I don't think this is how real any submarine captain did it, or submarine commander. However, this is the way the game works. Apparently, when you launch, if you hit something, the destroyers will immediately move to the position where you launched. So this incentivizes some extremely unstealthy tactics to um, get out of the area of fire. As far as I know, there is no doctrine or no even commander who attempted to launch torpedoes, go flank speed underwater to get out of the immediate area. Um, but that is how you supposedly have the best chance of success in this game. So it's just one of those things. You learn how to game the game, right? It doesn't make sense, but it also doesn't make sense for us to be doing level bombing from with uh, Dauntlesses from 8,000 feet up in the air. So we just learn these little game mechanics and then we apply them. When you're playing, you don't have to apply these mechanics. I mean, if you wanted to cry, this is really gamey, I completely agree. <laughs> I didn't think about it because it was so gamey, but that's the way it works. So I'm gonna turn, give these guys a rear tube. And what's their distance? <clears throat> Let me pretend to fire just to... And you can also fire your rear tubes like, uh, you know, 170 degrees from the from you can basically fire them forward. Let me manually target. They're a good distance out still, so we should have time. In fact, I'm not going to use the nav because I, I guess it doesn't always turn you as hard over as I want. I want sharp turn, and let's start targeting one of these. Let's also go identify it. Looks like a good enough one to target. I'm a little leery that my torpedoes will just go underneath, but hey. Let's, let's sink a ship. The revenge, the Tamber wants her revenge. For all we know, these are the two destroyers. Is this a Minikaze? No, these clearly are not, but for all we know or pretend, Tamber may think these are the two destroyers which sunk um, our, our submarine in the, in the previous video. So we're not gonna be using manual fire for this, but let's start to get to a solution. It's usually aided by identifying the destroyer. Okay. What do we have here? Do we have a Yugumo? No, because it has the two rear guns. There we go. A Hatsuharu. We will identify her as such. And we actually have two. But we will be targeting the first one for a torpedo launch. It's kind of nice that we started periscope depth with the destroyers nearby because that means that, hey, we don't have to worry about getting dive bombed. Alright. Let's move on. So, as soon as we get a good enough solution, it's uh, launch and away. I don't want to be going very quickly right now since. Actually, this is probably about right. Let's level up here. Um, I only want to zip away after I launch, but I, I don't want to clear too much space. I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling that we're much further away from these two destroyers than we were from the cruiser task force, which led to um, a casualty. The ship lost. However, wow, this Paris goes really up there. Better sea state this time. We should check. See state 5. 
Well, it's not C6, but not that that mattered last time. This is new. 2x. Huh. I'm not sure what that is. Anyways, we have a 99% solution, so that's it. It's time for us to fire. Sorry, I keep hitting the wrong buttons. Launch our rears. All four. Uh, six degree spread. That's fine to me. We'll go with seven degrees. Ah, six degrees is fine. And fire at the lead. Hatsuharu. Okay, that should be our rear tubes. Now we're going to do the, the very unrealistic strategy <laughs> of just <laughs> driving like a madman out of this area. <laughs> fine, fine. If that's the way we want to play a game, that's, that's what we'll do. Well, let's take the scope down as well. Um, we will also drop down to like 250. Turn off the radar. I assume our torpedoes are out. They are. Just start flying away from our, our area of launch because basically the AI is as good at spotting where you launch from as, as I am. In fact, they're better since this launch had happened from beyond visual range. I can see the torpedoes because they leave this weird, like, kind of, I don't know what to say, this weird pattern on the water. So I, I'm pretty sure that that's them. Yeah, I, I think it's... No, I'm not sure. I might not be seeing them correctly. I, no, I'm getting some weird graphical dis... Uh, yeah, there they are. I, I can see them now. So apparently the AI is as good at doing that thing that I do, watching where torpedoes come from and backing it out. Except for, I do it from like maybe a thousand feet away, a thousand yards away. They do it from 4,500 yards away. Like I said, these, I mean, the game is not perfect. It's definitely not perfect. I don't mind reloading until the hit lands itself. And the interesting thing will be, let's note, do they return to the place where I fired or do they return to my current position when the torpedoes impact? This was not clear to me from the comment section. Uh, I, I think I've already kind of made it clear, but my own opinion on this, by the way, is you would never know to do this without playing a game. This is certainly not... I would, I would describe this as a very gamey tactic. There's no... I don't think there's any... Um, yeah. I could see it like... Let's see. The, the Germans used to make... Um, Germans, by the way, much more maneuverable U-boats. So their tactics could be a little bit different. Spread might have been a little bit too wide. Although it should guarantee a hit, right? At least one. I don't think... I mean, historically... There's very, very few destroyers, even, yeah, I mean, very few destroyers that would survive us even a single hit. We have to keep in mind that we might have some duds and all that. All right. I am going to decrease speed a little bit now, and we'll prepare to rig for silent running. Looks like what we're going to get two hits. Whether they're whether or not those are duds, yet to be determined. First one looks like it's gonna miss, but I'm thinking maybe the third and fourth. All right, let's slow down to five knots now. Break for silent running. In fact, I want to turn hard back to starboard. Got a hit. And the second one, dud. Uh, now, there's another another comment, um, several comments about how the, all the dud torpedoes. I don't mind the dud torpedoes. I think that, in fact, it's great. It's very good to have dud torpedoes. It's historical. Um, Wolf and I were talking about it, and he was saying, you know, the dud rate in this is actually really generous. <laughs> you have way more duds, in, and they had way more duds in real life before they knew what was going on. So I'm all for that. I really am. It doesn't mean that when they happen, I'm not going to be incredibly frustrated because I role playing, or not even needing to role play in this case, but genuinely being upset by the fact that my torpedoes are not blowing up will be upset in the moment. But I'm not decrying the game for that. I think it's perfectly fair. 
So let's go over to the timbre and let's see, where did they set course to? It looks like she's setting course for... I can't tell. She's turning, so maybe she doesn't have an idea? Fires on board, in the rear. Yeah, so we're rigged for quiet... For silent running, I should say. She's turning back and forth, so I don't know, she might not even know where we are. I don't know which... Okay, I have that kind of an angle. I'm trying to see... Try to keep myself pointed away from them as much as possible. Um, just to narrow our active profile. Although I, I feel I, this is, I think, way too far for them to be using actives effectively. Let's just hope these fires keep on burning. We'd really like to get a kill out of this. And if I could, we'd like to speed up time a little bit here. So anyways, this is fun. I'm still having a lot of fun in this game. It's, what episode is this? Did I say 18, 17? It's just, a, it's really, a, it's a lot of fun. And the cat and mouse, like launching all those, all those aircraft, that's, <laughs> that's like my element. It's one of the things I like the most. I, gosh, I think that, might be headed right at us. Let's go down a little bit more. 260. Um, let me leave four knots because she's still a good distance away and we're trying to clear the area. Again, this is kind of, I think, a little bit gamey, but that's fine. Still fires on board, which I'm happy to see. And one weird thing is, she oh, okay, well that's fantastic. Something else, was that the magazine going off? We hope that she's doomed. And one other thing I guess I could do, I didn't think about this much, but it's definitely possible for me... I'm going to start turning slightly to port, give myself a more northerly direction of heading. Uh, I also didn't check where the bottom is, but oh, it's deep enough. Deep enough is the, is the answer, that's good. Uh, one thing it might actually be to our benefit, this is very unusual, but if we were to be in um, very shallow water, we could actually end up beaching ourselves in shallow water instead of blowing ballast, and that'll give us a chance of surviving. Obviously, once you surface, you're just dead. So it's possible to do that, I think. Okay, another secondary going off. Can't time compress yet, but I'm feeling pretty confident about um, our success. Now is probably about the right time to slow down to three knots. Yeah, so it looks like she is checking the area where we launched from. I think that the original wiggle I saw was maybe a collision avoidance algorithm kicking in. Yeah, so that's apparently it's where... You, no, it might be... Yeah, I think it's where we launched from. So I'm not... I'm, I'm pretty confident that we're, she's going to go in circles as soon as she gets to the point where we launched. Yeah, that's basically where I came from. Okay, so that's interesting. Just a note for playing the game. <laughs> Leave the vicinity you fired from at flank speed. Very unnatural. <laughs> and uh, then you'll be okay. Simple as that. I'm still trying to turn to the, to the left here. Basically, I'm hoping to get another torpedo off if we absolutely need it. Still feeling pretty comfortable with um, this situation as I continue to lower the depth because I'm really not that comfortable with it. Hate to lose two submarines in two missions like that. <sighs> but at least she's not directly overhead of us as she was last time. Three knots should be pretty quiet. We'd mo I'd move down to two. Probably will move down to two as she gets too close. Yeah, we're starting to get a little bit closer. Let's go down to two. But looks like she's just going to circle for a bit. With actives on and... Mm, well, we're not that far away from her, right?
but it looks like we managed to dodge this bullet. Just, just barely. I'm setting my rudder back to starboard, back to the right, just to give her a little bit of a worse angle. And now that we're in our baffles, we can get back up to three knots. And we're able to time compress now, so I guess that that is that. So let me go ahead and leave. Do we want to leave? No, we don't want to leave. We want this ship to... Dang it, it didn't. It's not on fire anymore. So it doesn't look like it's going to go down. Unless we go to periscope depth and launch at her. Her speed is still 19. I mean, she's still cooking along. It's impressive. I wonder if we have... So actually, I wonder if you even need to rig for silent running. I mean, you do when they get close, right? But when they're not close... By the way, it would be nice to see them drop torpedoes even when they don't know you're there. Just like... Well, that's very historical, right? They would just drop torpedoes anywhere near the vicinity. Either get to try to get lucky or to scare the submarine off. And there is still definitely a fire going here. Okay. It's... Maybe insane, but let's launch uh, another set of torpedoes. Very ambitious, one would say. Slowly pulling up. But not very quickly, so we should be okay as far as being detected goes. Could even try launching some rears at her. I guess one of the problems now is when she reforms, we're gonna be in a direct line with her. So I think yeah, you know what, we're just gonna have to we're gonna have to retreat out of this one. So I I'm not gonna launch another set of torpedoes unless. Okay, do I have rears? Did we did have a little bit of time and way too little time, of course in real life to have these. Yeah, we have zero tubes ready, 94 seconds. Good, that's that's nice to see somewhat realistic torpedo reload times. I think it's like 10 minutes in, in real life, um, if I'm not mistaken. It's quite a while. So we definitely did not have to wait 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, I would like to launch torpedoes, but this target is gonna be impossible to hit, and this one is not gonna be able to be hit at all with rears, so. All right, we'll leave in, uh, in a minute here. The best way to save your submarine, but by the way, just flee. <laughs> okay, she's actually coming right back for us. No, not today, my friend. So heavy damage, but close but no cigar, as they would say. Well, look, I get, I'm getting that feeling again, just like in Carmen San Diego, where you're getting too close, Gumshoe. I think we're gonna have to extend our patrol, or I would say not extend, but retract our patrol a little, a little bit further. Main goal here is maybe to prevent a line. So let's let's go to um, over here. Just make our patrol pattern over here. Because I I want to just stop um, the invasion of Port Moresby that happens. This is the main reconnaissance. I get such good reconnaissance on uh, the, the slot and all that area because we have so many aircraft with the cruiser group and the carrier task force. Okay, that's 60 hours worth of boxes. So, it would be nice to have a patrol button. <laughs> Wouldn't it just? Yeah, and we're, it looks like we're at 39 minutes in this video now. So, that'll be pretty much perfect timing for me to off camera launch a whole barrage of new aircraft. I'll figure out the best optimal patrol patterns, get those guys up and going. And uh, otherwise, I mean, things look good. We weren't able to sink that destroyer, which means unfortunately she won't be removed from the map. She'll just basically go back and repair. So kind of a bummer. Um, oh, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Oh, that is very interesting. Well, we're going to follow this seaplane home. We're going to be checking up to the north, northeast. We may have ourselves a Japanese cruiser force somewhere up there. And if so, 
Hornet will see Hornet's aircraft, I should say, will see their first action. We'll investigate that more in the next episode. So for now, that's it. Thanks for watching. And until the next one, stay safe and take care.